we start? How do we start? Oh. Uh, that's a battery master, that's on. Right. So there's like an ignition sequence, that one first. Ooh. Then you wait a couple of seconds while it does that, and then you flip the second one. Oh. Then we're armed. When those go green, and then uh, out of park. So do you keep your foot on? On the brake, yeah. Brake. It likes that. Pause in the middle and then go, oh, reverse your need. Actually, come think of it. So now that is, is this a switch or a actual? It's a switch. It is a switch. Yeah. So I'm just trying to compare it to how it was. It's, it's a bit quieter than last time. Yeah. But it still does have that, it's still got the Stuka. Yeah, Stuka dive bomb. Stuka dive bomb. <laughs> tone. And, but there's no kind of obvious rangey thing. Uh, that's, that's these green LEDs. Right. And they back off as you run out of battery. And the needle is ah, these ones. Yes. So yeah. that, that will go down that's gradually. Right. As you're, oh, right. And the needle clever. goes the other way as you use available power. Yeah. So it tells you how much you're using. And um, what about regen braking? Does that register on here? Have it. it doesn't have it. No. Ah. Are you going to fit that at some point? Well, or? We were going to, but our guys are adamant that on a rear wheel drive car it doesn't make any sense. Oh, okay. They say because uh, you need most of your braking on the front of the car. Right. Now that, the humming noise at the front, is that? That's a fan. That's a fan, right. Yeah. There's a lot of throttle travel there. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. there's a lot there. there I mean, it is it's that completely different thing from driving a saloon car, you know, a family electric car, which I've now driven quite a lot. Yeah. You know, that is all quiet and smooth and not that fast. <laughs> I, I am barely touching the throttle. My foot's like, I think it's moved about one millimetre. Well, because there's nothing else to do. I mean, you can really concentrate on steering it because you've never got to do any gear business. I mean, can you remember the moment when you first thought, I'm going to build an electric car that scares people because it goes so fast? It'd be about three years ago, and I was looking for a, a greener kind of car, uh, but I, I wanted something that was fast because, um, you know, I'm a bit of a petrol head, and, um, and there's just nothing in the world. It was in the days before Tesla and right. all that kind of stuff. And uh, we were talking to Lotus about building them a wind farm at their factory in Norfolk. And I just said to them one day, hey, do you fancy building um, an electric car? And this was before they Lotus yes. were involved with Tesla and the whole thing, wow. And they said yes, much to my right. surprise. And then that was the beginning of the journey. And in the end, we didn't make it with Lotus, but that was right. the start. It was really just born out of uh, a desire for a fast car that wasn't eating up the planet. Yeah. In a sense, the mechanics of building an electric vehicle are quite straight, well, very yeah. straightforward. Yeah. You know, it's two electric motors and that drive the wheels, but they're, they're finessing and um, that's right. Within, all... within six months, our team had done the mechanics and we had this. Just get past this, sorry. <laughs> 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 it's brutal. It's, I'm sorry about that, I should have warned you. <laughs> I think my tongue just went yeah. down. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it took six months and it was mechanically ready and it was the electronics that boxed us for another 18 months. The right. car took two years. And it was really the electronics around charging the battery. Uh, right. Everything else was fine, but it was well, it was known as the uh, the BMS, the battery management system. Right. We took great care over that. We uh, lowered the centre of gravity, pushed it forwards. Right. And uh, our guys were race car engineers and they wanted to make this car better than the standard Exige, but right. not to have a penalty from having a quarter of a ton of batteries in the room. Yeah. So we actually improved the balance of the car even though we made it electric. Right. And that was quite a cheap. So you, so this so they consider that this is actually better balanced than a petrol one? Yes. Wow. That is extraordinary, isn't it? So where the batteries in this then are Just here. They are there, right? Yeah. But they seem, it doesn't seem to take up as much physical space as the Tesla. I think we've got about half as much uh, battery weight. Right. Um, but, you, but you think not half as much range? Uh, I don't actually know what the real range of a Tesla is. All this, actually, we don't no, know what it is. No, right, yet. still don't know. I mean, I've done 189 miles in a Tesla on right. charge, so you know, it, yeah. will, it will do that. And it wasn't empty. We've got 36 kilowatt hours in our battery. I don't know what the Tesla is, but I think it's in the 50s. Yes, I think it is. Yeah. So they're. Got a little bit less than double the uh, capacity. Right. The so it should have a much bigger range. It should do. When we were specking the car, we decided to aim for a range of between 100 and 150 miles. Right. And the reason is we did a little bit of research, 
and discovered that 99.6% of all car journeys are less than 100 miles. Yeah. So we thought, there's no point lugging around half a ton of batteries for... uh, to use it 0.4% of the yes. time. Yeah. So we aim for between 100 and 150 miles to be practical. And we aim for a minimum 100 miles an hour to be uh, believable, to, right. be, to be a serious sports car. It turns out uh, this car has got a design speed of 170, but that was an accident. Right. We didn't do that he didn't. <laughs> he just accidentally don't go that fast. Such big motors. Yeah. And that's what they will do. So, are the, so you've got, whereas the, the Tesla has one electric motor, you've got two? Yes, yeah, two big ones, one on each side. Right. A combined 250 kilowatts or about 330 horsepower, which, yes. is, which is a lot, which is a lot. Of, of, the of this size. And that's more than that. I mean, the Tesla isn't as much as that, so yeah, it's clearly a lot more. And I, I mean, do you have any figures yet for like 0 to 60 speeds and all those sort of classic top gear type figures? We've had one shot at 0 to 100 so far, and we got to 8.45 seconds or something, which is um, which is Aston Martin territory. Yes. But we've uh, we've got to tweak it a little bit more. There's um, there's some more speed in the motors we haven't got on the re- right. Some other technical stuff. But, but I mean that is actually days. and that's again down to battery management, isn't it? I and mean, that's yeah. where you would control that stuff from. Yes. Know? And the motors, they've got the torque control on them. Right. Up until now, every time we've booted the car from a standing start, we've been unable to make the wheels spin. Right. So we think there's some kind of torque control in the motors that's holding back. Yes. And then we want to get closer to the edge of wheel spin. Because right. we'll get more power. Yeah. And more speed. So it's a bit early days for us on the mirrors. Right. And it is, it is interesting then, because, you know, the on the sort of fluffy end of the debate between petrol and electric, a lot of people will, you know, almost jokingly say, oh, but if I didn't have the sound of my, particularly yeah. if you've got high performance yeah. cars, I yeah. really love that. But this replaces that sound with something, I think you it, know, does. it definitely does, because certainly, you know, mass manufactured electric cars are very quiet, absolutely, yeah. I can understand why that, you would miss that, but this. I think this is a, a new genre of car sound. Amazing. This is electric supercar sound. Yeah, no, it is an exceptional car, I mean, mm. think. So, I mean, what, what are your plans then for it? Now, I mean, obviously you'll use it as your, your car, presumably. Yeah, our, our plans have kind of evolved since we started. Originally, the idea was just to build a car because uh, I wanted a greener car, but something that was fast. And, uh, and then it became a way to stimulate a debate about how we we're going to be traveling in the future, in the yeah. next 10 or 20 years or something, yeah. which is really important. Um, and, uh, and along the way, other ideas have come along. We've got a Mark II of this car on the drawing board right. that we might put into production. So, right. Uh, but I will use it day to day and we'll take it to shows and stuff like that and yeah. uh, we'll do some uh, speed stunts with it, yeah. speed records, uh, one of them being Lands End to John O'Groats, yes. which should be fun yeah. uh, to tackle the whole range anxiety thing. And more than anything else, so is to smash the stereotype of electric cars as being something Noddy would like to drive yeah. and, um, and to get people thinking about where all this energy comes from that yes. we used to travel with and, Absolutely. and, and the alternatives. Yeah. I mean, that, that uh, I mean, I think the argument that knocks the hot, because there's all those arguments about, you know, if you burn coal to make electricity, you're producing carbon, and it's just the same as the car in front of us, you know, the 1.6 super eco diesel Ford yeah. Focus, yeah, yeah, just yeah. to give it a plug. <laughs> you know, that the same amount of CO2 is coming out of the back of that as is effectively coming out of this, because it's, but that is nonsense, because we, I mean, that my argument is because we're used to that, we forget that the petrol doesn't come out of a pump. Yeah. It comes out of the ground the other side of the world. It's put in a ship, shipped here. Yeah. Yeah. Refined. Yeah. Refined using yeah. colossal amounts of electricity. That's the very, I mean, that's the thing I've been banging on about for weeks because the big refinery, I mean, the, one of the biggest refineries in the country I went, worked at, filmed at, they have their own string of pylons from the local power station yeah. that go directly from the power station to them. They use the same amount of electricity every day as a city of 250,000 people. That is the man who runs the refinery told me that. Coal, coal is, the, um, is, the, is a false comparison anyway. Because electric cars plugged into somebody's house, they're charging on a grid average. Yes. And grid average carbon is way lower than coal. Right. Way lower. So it's a false argument from the Petrolhead TV shows. Yes. <laughs> and every other single motoring journalist you've ever yeah. heard of. Just about. No, they do love that argument. Yeah. I haven't indicated, I'll indicate, there we go, that's bad. So I'll wait till it's, there we go, I'll just give him a... Uh, because electric cars plugged into the mains uh, cut about 80% of the CO2 from cars. 80% of the gain from electric vehicles uh, is still half.
bad even if we don't um, don't do anything other than plug into the grid. Right. So you you, you would say it was an eighty percent improvement on, yeah. a, on a petrol engine. I mean, just the the the, uh, the the scale of everything is you know that's what I think is where that argument is so spurious that you've got just say you've got ten thousand electric cars, ten thousand petrol buttons. The ten thousand electric cars are all charged from one central Big power source that, yeah. that has a huge amount of control over its emissions. Or you've got ten thousand little clanking petrol engines with millions of moving parts and generating loads of heat. Yes. You've got roughly three times the fuel efficiency of a right. power station compared to a car engine. Right. Roughly three times. Now that is very nice. Wow, that's brilliant. Well, well done. Excellent. Fab. Top drive. Put it into neutral. Excellent. Oh, well, you, oh, I want to how do you turn it off then? Just reverse the sequence. That one first. Yep. And then that one. That's it. Is that, am I allowed to do that oh, one? Oh, yeah, now? yeah, no, no problem. Just never press the red button. <gasps> it's a fire extinguisher in, in the battery pack. Oh, my God. And just goes, <laughs> yeah. oh. It's gone automatic, but that's a manual override. Right. I have to watch my son when he gets in there. You know, a little <laughs> yeah. Press that button. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't press that button. <laughs>